Good morning. My name is Paul Hazen, and I'm Chief Executive of the National Cooperative Business Association. And I want to welcome you to Live from Minneapolis, 2012, the International Year of Cooperatives, Cooperative Enterprises Build a Better World. This is historic, not only because we have our own international year, but this session is being streamed live on the internet, so we have people from around the world watching our presentation. So our, for our guests and cooperators from around the world, uh, welcome. If you, if you are a tweeter, we encourage you to tweet about this meeting. Uh, if you're uh, looking at us online, uh, send us an email at uh, info at ncba.coop if you have a question or a comment, and we'll try to get that addressed. So we hope today is going to be a very interactive, interactive exciting session. Uh, the Co-op News Hub in the UK has also picked this up, and so to our UK guests, uh, welcome. And to the staff back at NCBA office in Washington, I'll give you a shout out, and uh, sorry that you're not here with us. My, it's my pleasure to introduce the Director General of the International Cooperative Alliance, Chuck Gould. Chuck has been uh, with uh, ICA for now one year, and we're very, very lucky to have him. I actually was on the search committee, chaired the search committee when we selected Chuck, and I have seen the tremendous work that he has done uh, already at ICA and positioning uh, cooperatives for the next generation, the ne next decade of cooperation. So Chuck, uh, welcome to uh, NCBA. Well, good morning. It's a very real privilege to uh, be invited to speak with you today, and especially to uh, share the stage with, uh, with Paul. Uh, all of us at International Cooperative Alliance uh, in, in Geneva are, uh, are devastated by the news of Paul's leaving NCBA. Uh, you know him, of course, as a national cooperative leader. You may not be aware that he is uh, truly uh, uh, a remarkable global cooperative leader as well. Uh, we are taking some comfort uh, in IC, at ICA that he will continue to serve his term out at the, uh, on our global board, so we can push off our grieving for a little bit, but we know that that, uh, that day is, is coming. Uh, and as Paul said, he also chaired the selection committee when I was recruited a year ago to the International Cooperative Alliance, so I have the, uh, the greatest appreciation for his uh, sound judgment and insights uh, uh, as well. I also have uh, a lot of appreciation for Minnesota. For those of you here, uh, uh, I really uh, enjoy this state. My family moved here when I started high school, and so I went to high school and I uh, went to University of Minnesota Law School. I met my wife here, and we still have a home in Minneapolis. So I always appreciate the opportunity uh, to, uh, to come back. It's one of America's uh, great and generous cities, uh, as well as, I think, a very beautiful uh, part of the country, and obviously a center of, uh, of cooperativeness uh, historically. Uh, I appreciate the opportunity to uh, speak to you today on a subject that I have a lot of passion about, uh, the International Year of Cooperatives. And uh, that is because I believe that this is truly one of those once-in-a-lifetime opportunities that come along uh, for cooperatives that we, uh, we just can't afford to miss. And so I want to lay out uh, this morning how the preparations for the International Year are proceeding and uh, what this can mean for the cooperative brand around the world. Now, obviously, this year is marching toward us uh, very quickly. It officially launches at the end of this month, October 31st in New York. But it's coming to us in a certain context, and we want to be certain that the messages that we convey uh, are, are communicated inside that, that context. Uh, the first of these... Um, Somebody may have to advance that for me. The first, uh, there we go. The first context is, uh, is the, the rise of social media and the impact that that's having around the world. We're, we're seeing a generation today for whom technology-aided collaboration is second nature. They have collaboration and cooperation as part of their DNA. They're temperamentally predisposed to coming together with people they've, they've never met. And their absorption of social media is an important part of how our message is communicated and received, and it's an important part of the context in which the, uh, the year is, uh, is arriving. The other uh, macro level uh, feature that we're focused on is this widespread recognition of the limits of capitalism. Uh, and obviously this was precipitated by the financial uh, uh, 
collapse uh, in 2008, and it follows on the, the, the recognition of the limits of centrally planned economies uh, 20 years ago. So today there's a, a widespread receptivity to other models, uh, to the cooperative model, and that's a receptivity that simply did not exist uh, 10 or 20 years ago. It simply wasn't there. There was so much confidence in these other models. So we're, we're witnessing this uh, remarkable convergence of events in which the year is arriving, and that makes this an especially exciting time for us to be telling our story. Uh, in fact, the ICA Global Board, when they've looked at this, uh, believes that this coming decade uh, could be one of the fastest periods of growth for cooperatives, that by the end of this decade, the cooperative could be the fastest growing model of enterprise in the world. We have, fortunately, a made-to-order opportunity to uh, tell our story. Uh, and that, that opportunity is the International uh, Year of Cooperatives. Uh, ICA sees it as our responsibility to make sure that the global cooperative community fully exploits this year. Uh, ICA was established by cooperatives from around the world in 1895, uh, a period of, uh, of great upheaval, uh, but also great growth of cooperatives, a period really much like today. Uh, today we have members in about uh, 100 countries who have agreed the values and principles of cooperative, uh, uh, cooperative uh, movement. And uh, we help those countries develop a legislative framework that is conducive to cooperative growth. Uh, we also make certain that global bodies like the International Accounting Standards Board understands how cooperatives differ from corporations. And we make the case, we lobby them to make certain that the regulations that they're drafting to deal with the reform of a system that didn't work for people doesn't unwittingly capture within those reforms cooperatives uh, who were not responsible for uh, the, the problems that occurred and who differ in important ways. We also make sure that the global media knows a cooperative story and we collect uh, data and research on, uh, on cooperatives and publish that. So ICA worked with the UN to get the International Year of Cooperatives declared. And when it was secured, the ICA board committed that at a global level, we have to focus on doing one thing and doing it really very well uh, during the year. We want to achieve one significant result. And we asked, what is it that we want to achieve in 2012 that will position us for post-2012? If all we do is celebrate 2012 and have a, a great series of, of uh, events during the year, we will have squandered this incredible opportunity. So the ICA board felt that the one deliverable that we really should focus on, the outcome that we should target, is increasing public awareness of the cooperative as a serious values-based business model. So we want to relaunch the global cooperative brand. We want to communicate the scale and the scope of cooperatives and to do that in a way that we can build on after 2012. So the core of that campaign is a common message that would be used by cooperatives around the globe and that would drive people who are exposed to it, intrigued by it, to a website where they can gain a more detailed understanding of cooperatives. So the message begins with the slogan that was adopted by the UN, Cooperative Enterprises Build a Better World. And ICA worked extensively with the UN. That's not the slogan. ICA worked extensively, if we can go back one. ICA worked extensively with the UN to, uh, uh, to ensure that the word enterprises was uh, uh, incorporated into the slogan. Because we want to reinforce what we believe is a critical component of the, uh, of the branding, and that is that the cooperative is a serious business model. It's values-based, but it's a serious business model. Uh, the slogan is accompanied by the IC IYC logo, of course, and for the year, we're asking every ICA member in 100 countries to encourage their member cooperatives to use the slogan and the logo together with the website uh, 2012.coop in all of their communications to members and to the public in their brochures and their annual reports and their newsletters and their magazines, but also at point of purchase displays, on product packaging, on shopping bags. We don't want to replace the existing branding, but to integrate this message with it. And we believe that by tapping into members' existing communications and marketing channels, we can communicate a common message with significant impact in a very cost-effective way. And we can surprise people by the breadth and 
and uh, scope of cooperative enterprises in agriculture and food and fisheries and banks and insurance and workers' cooperatives and health and housing, and to make them curious to know more. So our friends at Dot Co-op made available to us the uh, URL uh, 2012.coop, which we'll be, we'll be launching this new website at our uh, biannual conference uh, next month in Cancun, Mexico. And we're working with URIXI, which is the European Institute for Cooperative and, and Social Enterprise at the University of Trento in Italy, to feature a new cooperative story every day during the year on our website. And since, three, since uh, 2012 is a leap year, as it turns out, we'll have 366 stories of cooperatives that we'll feature uh, during the year, and that will change daily. So it's a dynamic component, and it also allows us to demonstrate through the collective stories, the geographic and sectoral breadth of cooperatives, and also their varying size and, and scale. Uh, we've secured a publisher to produce a, a legacy book at the end of the year that will feature about 100 representative stories as well. And we've partnered with the uh, Cooperative News in the UK and with, uh, with IPS, if you can go to the next slide please, and to, with IPS, which is an independent media organization headquartered in Rome, uh, but that works around the world, uh, on a news feed for cooperative news, which will be another dynamic uh, element of the website. And uh, that we'll be able there to show cooperative news, but also cooperative perspective on emerging uh, events. Now, there are, there are a few key messages in all of this that we're very focused on communicating. And we want to that we want to illustrate through these stories and through the news. And the first message is one I've mentioned before, that cooperatives are a serious business model. We think that's what is not often understood, that this is a model that deserves respect as we're looking nationally in different countries at uh, alternative uh, ways of doing business. Uh, this is a model with scale, and our Global 300 report uh, demonstrates uh, that. In the, uh, the latest edition of this report, uh, which we'll be releasing in New York at the end of October, we'll be showing that the 300 largest cooperatives in the world have an aggregate turnover, an annual uh, revenue, uh, in excess of uh, 1.6 uh, trillion uh, US dollars. So if they were just the 300 were aggregated, that would give them the size of the economy that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ninth largest economy in the world, just if you took the 300 largest cooperatives alone. They're a successful business model, and they make significant contributions to GDP in many countries and significant contributions for employment, and they need to be taken seriously. The second message is that we're values-based. Sustainability is central to our way of of doing business. Fair banking is at the core of why financial cooperatives were established. Our values are integral to our business model. They're not a, a marketing strategy that we add as a veneer of respectability. It's a different way of doing business. And the third message is that the members, those who benefit from the cooperative, govern it. And at a time when, when people, especially young people, are cynical about the political and the economic models that dominate their lives, when they're looking for a voice, when they're looking for impact, uh, we believe that the cooperative is not only an attractive uh, and effective uh, governance model, we think it's a very compelling one. So we will also have a deliberate social media component as well uh, in this public awareness campaign to make sure that we're reaching uh, especially that next generation uh, who are so connected through this media and who are a target for, uh, for our campaign. And we have engaged a global PR firm, uh, Weber Shandwick, uh, to provide the expertise and the context that we need for a series of media events that we'll have during the year. Uh, and I'm delighted that here, too, we have a cooperative initiative because NCBA and WOKU are partners with us in this engagement, which promises to maximize our, uh, our impact as well as uh, leverage our collective resources. Uh, we're launching a cooperative art contest for youth uh, next, uh, next month you know, at our General Assembly in Cancun. Uh, and youth can submit an entry in this contest uh, in uh, any of three categories, video, music, or photography. And we'll have prizes in, uh, in each category. And then, uh, finally, there will be a number of key events uh, during, the, 
during the international year, uh, which we will use to uh, capture uh, mainstream stream media attention. Uh, the UN launch of the year in New York City, October 31st, is the first of those. And we can go one more here. And this is in conjunction with a plenary session of the United Nations uh, General Assembly. So there'll be a roundtable discussion uh, that morning at the UN, and ICA's president will be summarizing that roundtable to the General Assembly of the United Nations that afternoon. Uh, we also will be announcing uh, in New York a, a global development uh, cooperative fund. And this is a, a $50 million uh, fund that will be funded through the first tranche of capital from those Global 300 cooperatives. So we are asking the Global 300 cooperatives, the largest cooperatives in the world, to invest $250,000 each in this fund. And that provides the first tranche of capital that we would then leverage to create a $50 million fund that would then be um, loaned out through intermediary, intermediary cooperative development uh, organizations to help with cooperative, uh, cooperative development and, and growth. And so we're looking forward to, uh, to launching that uh, October 31st. We do have the first uh, group of commitments uh, to that fund uh, already. Uh, two weeks after that, we will be uh, opening the, the international year with the cooperative community at our biannual conference in General Assembly, which this year will be in Cancun, Mexico. Uh, November 14th or 18th. Our whole focus there is on how to tell the cooperative story, how to use this year to get out our message, how to make certain that we're getting in front of, in front of the public and the, and the media. And we hope that this becomes a social change story. Uh, the opening plenary sessions uh, will, will feature uh, Sam Graham uh, Felsom, who, uh, we can go one more slide here, who is a new media uh, strategist. He was active in President Obama's uh, presidential campaign. He was chief blogger there, and he'll be talking about how to use the new, the new media um, uh, venues. And the closing plenary speaker is Philippe Cousteau, who's the environmentalist grandson of the famous Jacques Cousteau. And he's uh, the chief ocean correspondent for uh, Animal Planet. He's president of a, of a conservation organization. But he's also a founder of a marketing company. So he can speak both to the substance of sustainability as well as to how do you tell a story? How do you get your message in front of the media? Uh, we have 2,000 attendees so far uh, registered for this. It promises to be very successful. Uh, we have not closed registration, however, so you are still in time. Uh, and we hope, to, uh, we hope to see you there. We'd love to see uh, a larger than normal U.S. attendance since it is so, uh, so close. Uh, there are a couple of other select events uh, for a global audience uh, during the year that I'm just going to quickly go through. One will be in Venice in March, and this is sponsored by uh, Eurixi, the uh, organization I mentioned earlier we're partnering with now on the Global 300. And um, this is focused on uh, cooperative research is for the scientific community. Uh, also then, the first Saturday in July is of course uh, the uh, International uh, Cooperative Day, and that will be uh, a very special day this year. We're, we're hoping to have everybody engaged in the same activity on that day, and we'll be releasing more plans on that shortly. And then we have a very significant event coming up in October of next year, <coughs> excuse me, which is uh, an international summit of cooperatives, and this was conceived of by Desjardins in, uh, in Canada, and ICA is very proud to be a co-host of this, and this will be October 8th to 11th in uh, Quebec City with a complimentary uh, conference uh, adjoining it the weekend before. The general aim of this is to bring together cooperative and mutual leaders and decision makers to look at challenges and initiatives that will promote the cooperative movement worldwide. Uh, there'll be a marked economic and, uh, and financial focus, and then there'll be an economic conference in conjunction with that that is sponsored by St. Mary's Uni University in, in Halifax uh, that preceding weekend. And then finally, the ICA Expo will be in Manchester, England, um, at the end of October and early November. And this is our biannual trade fair. Uh, and because this will also mark the close of the international year, we're convening a world cooperative uh, forum in conjunction with it. And this forum gives us the opportunity to pivot from the international year of cooperatives into what we expect to be a cooperative decade, 
to really put the vision out there of the cooperative as the fastest growing enterprise in the world and to create a blueprint on how we would make that happen. What would have to change? What would we have to achieve? And we see this as, an, as a great opportunity to bring people together to, uh, to, uh, to do that. Uh, of course, I've only been describing our global framework, uh, the opportunity to uh, communicate a, a common message uh, that signals that the communicator, the individual cooperative, is a member of a global movement. Uh, and that this movement consists of enterprises who believe in a, a different way of doing business, that they're part of a serious business model with collective scale that's allowing individuals around the world to engage in a self-help, values-based uh, enterprise model to meet their social and economic needs. That's what we're communicating through the public awareness campaign. Every country is going to have to look at how they will use this uh, to meet their own uh, national agendas. And uh, I know that Paul will be addressing that uh, in a few moments uh, for the US. Uh, we have launched an international year of cooperatives uh, fund appeal uh, to, to help pay for this. We can't cover all of these expenses in our normal operating budget. And I want to uh, uh, acknowledge here the generous uh, pledge that uh, NCBA has made uh, to that uh, campaign. We, uh, we definitely appreciate that. So this is an opportunity to uh, tell the cooperative story to a public, especially a, a young public, uh, who we believe are hungry for this message. They just haven't heard it. Uh, we want to communicate this to, to, uh, to youth who live and breathe cooperative models, but may not realize that the cooperative is also an enterprise model that, uh, that they can engage in. It's an opportunity for us to demonstrate that cooperatives can work together around the world to communicate a common message, and that we can build on that platform then to periodically communicate messages that we, are that we believe are important to change the image of the cooperative brand in the future. And we think it's an opportunity to really relaunch that brand as a serious uh, business model. So 2012 is the beginning, it's not the culmination. Uh, it kickstarts this vision. This is a very seminal moment for cooperatives. We hope that you'll join us. And Paul, I will turn it back to you. Thank you. Thanks, Chuck. Uh, we're th so thrilled to have Chuck at the helm of the Global Organization for Cooperatives, the ICA, and you can see uh, how he's effectively communicating uh, our message uh, here to you today and to people around the world. <clears throat> I wanna, again, I want to acknowledge our friends who are viewing this uh, via the, the internet. Uh, if you have any questions or comments, send us an email at info at ncba.coop. Chuck has outlined how the ICA has made sense of the UN's goals for the international year and defined a unifying strategy for cooperatives around the world. In the US, we have been working closely with the ICA and other cooperative organizations to assure that our approach is aligned, but also to identify a unique frame that speaks directly to the needs of the United States uh, uh, citizens. A cross-sector team of US cooperative communication leaders defined three messages that spring from this international tagline, cooperative enterprises build a better world. Each one emphasizes a key aspect of the cooperative dif difference that is particularly relevant for the US cooperative economy. The first one is putting people first. That's what we're all about, we're about people. And that's where the buck stops as well for cooperatives. It's what makes our businesses different. The second key message is cooperatives provide local service with the strength of a global network. Co-ops are based in communities, have relationships with communities, and serve communities. At the same time, co-ops around the world not share best practices and trading relationships. The th third key um, uh, message is innovating to meet members' needs. When co-ops innovate, the results are local jobs, better services, and improved access to necessary inputs and sought after products. US business thought leaders need to know this and we believe they are increasingly aware that cooperative enterprises bring innovation home on behalf of members. To provide a perspective and strategy, we got input from representatives of all the US cooperative sectors as we built a US action plan. We've been able to assemble national co-op leaders from across the sectors to form an IYC US steering committee. 
This group uh, reviews potential projects for broader adaption and other feedback that goes into the, our planning. Uh, through cooperation, these groups will be working together on common messaging and coordination between the sectors. In the U.S., we have developed an action plan that focuses communication efforts where the impact will be the greatest. For each of these key audiences, we have a tailored approach. Cooperatives are serious businesses, as Chuck said. Research on ec the economic impact of cooperatives demonstrate the power of the economic voice cooperatives have on, in the United States. $650 billion in annual revenue, more than 2 million jobs, and more than 29,000 enterprises. But beyond those numbers is the shared value, and more than that, the cooperatives generate what, through the way that they do business. Business thought leaders are starting to make that connection. We see the international year as an opportunity to simply amplify the awareness. The theme for the 2011 International Co-op Day in July was youth, the future of cooperative enterprise. In the United States, we are committed to bringing the international year into the worlds of the young people. To do so, we are collaborating with the next generation co-op leaders and getting the word out through social media. NCBA has a proven track record of bringing the cooperative message to policymakers. IYC works both to deepen the relevance and the recommended strategies and offers a platform for unity. We had success in, in passing Senate Resolution 87 in the Senate this year, supporting the International Year, with all U.S. Senators endorsing our efforts. So how are we going to make this all happen? How are we going to reach all these audiences? I'd like to give you a couple of examples. I'd like to call on Diana Meehan from the Cabot Co-op Creamery up to the microphone here to tell us about uh, a project that, co -op, uh, that Cabot is working on as a great example of how to reach out to local communities and consumers. Yeah, please. Cabot Creamy Cooperative is sponsoring a celebration of communities, co-ops, and volunteers. Uh, NCBA and CUNA, uh, current partners, were also reaching in, out and speaking with Rural Electric, with bike co-ops, housing, food co-ops, um, AERPs, Create the Good, and the Points of Light Institute are, are seriously interested in becoming partners on this also. Um, what, what we're doing is following, um, it's a seven week tour, it's, um, we're following the East Coast Greenway, which goes uh, basically from Florida all the way up to the Canadian border. There will be pro almost 50 communities touched, but we're going to have eight major events. Uh, the kickoff is in Miami on May 12th. Uh, and then uh, the other major events are in Charleston, South Carolina, Durham, North Carolina, Fredericksburg, Virginia, Wilmington, Delaware, New York, Providence, and then the finale is in Portland, Maine on July 7th, which is, as you just heard, is the, uh, the weekend, the official weekend for the International Year of the Co-op. Uh, there will be strong PR along the way. We have an, uh, a wrapped RV that will follow the entire route. Um, Cabot will also be unveiling shortly a mobile app, which will be associated with this tour, um, where people can uh, put down their hours that they volunteer, and then awards will be announced uh, at uh, the Portland event. So uh, if this fits any of you, if geographically it fits, we'd love to partner with you. We all heard uh, a few minutes ago Jack Bailey indicate that one of the challenges that we all have is getting the word out to our communities on what we're doing that's good within and for those communities. So we think this is an opportunity for all of us to do that. Thanks, Paul. Thanks, Diana. So that's one great example <laughs> of how we're going to reach out to local communities and civic leaders. The next area is uh, raising the profile of cooperatives using um, celebrity spokespersons. And I want to call on Janine Latsko from the National Co-op Grocers Association for her to tell you about a project uh, that they're working on.
Thank you, Paul. Um, I'm very pleased to be here to tell you about a project that na the National Cooperative Grocers Association started working on this summer. Um, we're engaging our food co-op members in telling their own stories through the medium of video. Um, this summer we started producing a series of 13 short videos uh, hosted by celebrity chef Kevin Gillespie, who is the chef and owner of the Wood Fire Grill in Atlanta, Georgia, was a finalist on Top Chef Season 6, and his beard has 5,000 Facebook fans. Um, the co-ops that are participating in this series of videos were chosen through a competitive uh, application process. And we were really looking for stories of how co-ops really do build stronger communities. Uh, the videos are in production right now, and we uh, anticipate having um, a virtual world premiere, and that will be taking place on Saturday, January 21st at 7 p.m. U.S. Central Time. Uh, we invite all of you to log in to our consumer website, www.strongertogether.coop slash premiere, um, where we will be streaming the first three of those videos. Uh, videos will be debuted through the first several months of the year at about two a week, and they'll also be made available to NC NCGA's member co-ops on DVD. Um, and we're also hoping to work, <coughs> excuse me, with www.stories.coop to help um, promote those videos. Thanks. Thanks. One of the products we'll be launching for the international year is a website, y.coop, which will be, have the uh, database of all 29,000 cooperatives in the country so that you can search and find co-ops in your community. And one of the legacies that I'm hoping for out of this uh, out of this year is that we get more cross-sector cooperation. We're already seeing that starting. And so I'd like to call on Brian Donovan from uh, Austin, Texas to tell you about the project that they're working on. Uh, I am uh, work for the Intercooperative Council. We're student co-op housing in Austin. And part of a, a network that has started about a year ago called the Austin Cooperative Think Tank. And our goal is to grow the cooperative economy we thought about doing that just in Austin, but we have left it open because we want to grow the cooperative economy all over. In part inspired by a quote from Paul Hazen, which is, we should have a cooperative solution to every need. And th the group was started by a contact from uh, a marketing person at a credit union that contacted the local food co-op and said, you know, we'd like to get together and talk about the advantages of being a cooperative, and at the first meeting, 20 people showed up from more than 10 different co-ops, and I'm one of the oldest people uh, that's at the table. So we have a lot of young people that want to start cooperatives. Um, one of the things that's helped us is we had a five-year campaign for the first cooperative brew pub, which opened last year, uh, that helped to kind of raise the profile among the community, uh, a new community of cooperators. And we're really hoping, we're actually in the process now of deciding exactly what form our group will take, you know, what our long-term structure will be, and also developing projects for 2012. Uh, we've started a pilot mentoring program where we're pairing veteran cooperators with young enthusiasts to help them uh, be able to both learn uh, how to talk better that for the veteran cooperator to learn how to talk better with young people, and for the young people how to learn to, to start the cooperatives that they're dreaming of now. And uh, we hope that by the end of 2012, we'll have our long-term structure and uh, have more projects than just uh, the one that I mentioned to, to hang our hat on. Thank you. Thanks, Brian. So I hope those three stories give you some inspiration about what you can do in your own cooperative or in your own community to uh, raise the profile of cooperatives. As Chuck mentioned, uh, we've teamed up with the ICA and the World Council of Credit Unions to engage a uh, public relations firm uh, to tell our story uh, that we're innovative, value-based businesses that enjoy economic success, 
create jobs and build wealth in communities. Uh, we're focused on two particular areas of the media, uh, the business media, the Wall Street journals, the Financial Times of the world, and then the global media, CNN, uh, BBC, and, and also the social media. It's across the sectors and around the world, I hear complete agreement, and we're hearing it today, that we really need to focus on youth and an opportunity with our messaging and opportunities to take our message on the internet and go viral with it will be, we believe will be very necessary. I'd like to call up uh, Howard Brodsky, who's the CEO of CCA Global Partners, to talk about a project that they're working on, and then we're gonna show a short video that uh, CCA has created. Howard. Thanks, Paul. Uh, you know, it was mentioned earlier that we're trying to reach not only young people, but trying to reach a massive audience. And we don't have millions of dollars, but we have millions of members. And I think this is such an opportunistic time to leverage the whole movement of a co-op and really make it a movement. And I think having the International Year, the co-op is a tremendous opportunity for us. And the question is, you know, it was talked about the panel earlier, that we live in a world where to catch people's attention with media is very difficult. People have a 10 second time frame of really catching their attention, not only youth, but adults between everything that's going on. So we want to understand how we could leverage it on social media in a way that can really be a movement. And we thought also you need an action step. You have to ask people to do something. And so we came out with choose a co-op. Rather than just tell them about a co-op, we want people to choose a co-op. Now frankly, when you see it, it could be choose a credit union. Uh, and people could adapt at the end to put their own co-op on it. But we really think if we got all our members and all the members here to adapt to it, there could be millions of viewers on YouTube and social media to really create a movement. And we purposely made it a little edgy because I think if you look at what catches attention today, it's what's edgy is what's shared. Regular doesn't get shared. Little nice stories are nice, but nobody shares them. So we purposely made it a little edgy so it would get shared. So I, hopefully the video will show. I haven't, I haven't uh, seen it work here yet, but we'll do, hopefully it will.
we have a whole social media strategy uh, that's been developed uh, by uh, with the partnership between Cooperatives UK and the Canadian Co-op Association and NCBA. And Eric DeLuca down here is our manager, stand up Eric so people can see you, is our manager for IYC. And if you're interested in anything about IYC, but especially about social media strategy, he's the guy to, guy to see. We also are going to be, uh, uh, as Howard said, uh, the power of co-ops is in our grassroots with our members. And uh, one of our members, the National Cooperative uh, Grocers Association, has a very successful program, My Co-op my Co-op Rocks. It's a video contest where uh, cooperators from around the country have made videos and submitted them about what's special about their food co-op. We're going to be expanding that in 2012 and make the contest available to any type of cooperative. So if you want to see more about that, go to mycooprocks.coop and you can see last year's winners. And, and please get this information out to your members so they may submit a, uh, a video. We're, we are pounding the pavement, promoting IYC before policymakers. As we, I mentioned, we passed the Senate resolution. Later this year, there will be an hour of floor speeches in the House of Representatives broadcast live on C-SPAN. And another way that uh, you can get the message out to policymakers is through your own publications. Uh, National Rural, Rural Electric Cooperative Association has created this cover for their premier magazine. Uh, I believe it's going to go uh, out in January. That goes out to their members, but it also goes to policymakers. And here's a way for uh, the NRECA to support the efforts around the International Cooperative Alliance. Other uh, cooperative organizations are doing the same thing to promote uh, IYC and their existing publications, but it's a great way to strengthen our message. As Chuck said, uh, this is an opportunity to rebrand uh, cooperatives, co-ops for the coming decade that uh, demonstrate that co-ops provide local service with the strength of a global network, co-ops put people first, and co-ops innovate to meet members' needs. There's a lot of material that's being developed uh, and will be placed on these websites. Uh, and one of the greatest challenges that we have is to make sure that we're all sharing the information, we're not duplicating each other. Uh, we formed an Anglophone working group between US, Canada, UK, New Zealand, and Australia uh, to share our, our, our common ideas and to work together on projects like the, like the uh, social media strategy. So thank you very much. I believe we have some time for questions, comments. Um, so I'd like to open the floor up and for Chuck, either for Chuck or myself. Thank you so much. I thought that was a great video. It made me weep, which is a really good sign. <laughs> this is the question that I didn't get to ask earlier. <laughs> what can we do to get the really large co-ops to, co to participate? Where is true value in REI and Organic Valley? There are less than 200 people in this room. This is the biggest thing going. Where are they? We need their help. Right. We're, it, that's one thing that we all can be doing is making sure first that our co-op is, is uh, participating and, and it's out there and active. And then reach out to the other co-ops in, in your communities that you know. I, I know, for example, uh, Organic Valley has a plan. Um, and I know other co the large co-ops are, are working on it. But you're exactly right. We need everybody pulling together on this one to have the maximum impact. thing on the video if anybody wants it please let me know and I will be because I think the more we share it and you can customize it and I'm putting a personally call up the CEO of ACE because uh, I think they'll use it too but I think it's this and and you know the World Wildlife Foundation did one where they had members make up their own you know I think the crazy videos the off ones the little edgy is what people are seeing today if some of your members I would encourage your own members to create one you know because frankly I think agencies, it's members that can create better things than agencies today. No, no offense to agencies. But I think members are more real in touch with creating things that people want to see today. That's what's working on YouTube and social media. How do we find that video? If, no, it's not on yet. We just literally finished it. And uh, I'll post it. Our, our web is, uh, if you just send me an email, hbrotsky at ccaglobal.com, um, I'll be happy to send the video to anybody. Yeah, B -A -B -A H -A B R O D S K Y at C C A Global dot com. We'll we'll send it out uh, to our email list at NCBA, so everybody who's on our database will get it. 
Stanley Fulton, Chairman and CEO of XL411. I'm uh, currently creating an exploratory committee and we face common challenges. Uh, the common challenge is we have a, a vastness of information that needs to be communicated uh, coming from many, many sources. So we have a challenge of communicating command and control. And I want to do this by using the internet, of course, but I really love doing things visually because it enables people to see what's happening very quickly without actually having to go into the guts of it. I like to have the guts of it and go deeper if you want to spend the time, but it would be so capable of us to overwhelm everybody here with emails that there has to be some command structure there. And that's what I'm yearning for and searching for right now. So we have a common need, and uh, I'd like to talk to you about it more at length. And if people have ideas about this, I'd like to hear them. Great. What, one thing on the website, um, uh, help me with the 2012, Andrea, help me with the name of the one. The, the, 2012 USA.coop is going to be a place where people can freely post and gather information. So that's a once, hopefully we can drive people to that so it's a one stop uh, place for information. Yeah, that's the open forum. And what I'm envisioning in my cooperative, uh, in my committee, I'm going to have uh, captains. I have at least eight teams, it looks like. And so uh, I've got a brother-in-law also that was an astronaut, went up four times. And at one time when there was a mission that he wasn't on, he was what they call at NASA CAPCOM. I think it's the captain of communications. When everybody wants to talk at once, it doesn't work. Yeah. So all the teams go up, it filters up, and the CAPCOM goes, this one, this is what's important so that we don't get overwhelmed. So we need that CAPCOM feature mm -hmm. in our forum. Uh, Judy Zewitz, this is a question for Chuck. Um, well, I appreciate the process and all the good work you've done. Um, in the end of the decade, how will we document that we've made the world better? What, what kind of outcomes do you see from your position in terms of human needs? There's actually a couple ways to, to create that kind of a measurement. And that's part of the, the conference that we're looking at convening uh, at, the end of the, at the close of the year is how, would you, how do you measure the, the, the kind of the kind of vision that we, that we have. Now part of that is simply by cooperative growth. We believe that in itself because we're so committed to the cooperative model, we think more cooperatives in itself is the right kind of a measurement. More people engaged in cooperatives is the right kind of measurement. If we can change the cooperative brand image, I think that begins to address the earlier question about where are the larger cooperatives? We need to make certain that the cooperative brand is so strong that the largest cooperatives are front and center with their cooperative identity because they recognize that this in itself is seen by the public as the way to do business. This is seen by the public as the right way to, to really demonstrate their values, sustainability and access and so forth. So part of the, the answer about the world being a better place is we believe more cooperatives. And we believe that the conditions are ripe for more cooperatives and for more members in, uh, in existing cooperatives. Good. Thanks, Ralph. Well, thank you very much. Uh, I'd like to now turn the podium over to Martin Lowry, the uh, NCBA board chair. Stay here, Paul. Chuck, stay here, please. Paul doesn't really know why he turned the program back over to me. But uh, I think this is great. Thank you, Chuck, for, for this. Thank you, Paul. I mean, we're, we're on track. We're moving ahead. But uh, there's one more thing we want to do before we break for the, for the morning, and that is to share a plaque with Paul for his service. You come over to Chuck because I know that ICA feels the same way. The plaque, which is this plaque, says, in appreciation of Paul Hazen's 25 years of dedicated service to the National Cooperative Business Association, its members, and the cooperative community in the United States and around the world, your commitment to the cooperative principles and values shines in all that you have accomplished. NCBA is a stronger organization because of your leadership. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you.